push this back to stay here. Like that. Okay. Maybe you are low. Maybe. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Why are you so very strange? I'm not very strange. I have to ask you that every single morning. I don't know. What do I do? <laughs> Uh, how would you work out? My workout was good. What'd you do today? Oh, what I did today. Uh-oh. I did my cardio blitz. Okay. I did back. Okay. I did abs. And I did calves. How'd you get so much done? I zoomed zoom. Well, I got there 15 minutes earlier than normal. Oh, uh, okay. So that'll do it. As I told you guys uh, yesterday, I am taking the week off. So... Which actually worked out really well because if you follow me on social media, you know that I am co-hosting a radio show today from noon to three. So I have to look something that resembles professional. Right, so right. here you go. And you're, what station are you co-hosting on today? WDEL. Ah, so the Delaware radio station. Yes. Awesome. And um, you, I know you're thinking, why do you have to look professional? It's radio. <laughs> yes, that's true. It is radio. But um, we're bringing in a lot of the professional women here in Delaware because... On Thursday, it's International Women's Day, so we're going to be talking about women in business. Right. And so I am going to be working with the regular host, who is Rick Jensen, and we're going to be interviewing um, several of the successful women in business here in the Delaware area. Right. So I feel like I can't go in there looking like a frump. Hmm. So this is my not looking like a frump look. <laughs> well, that is awesome. <laughs> I like it. So uh, what are you having for breakfast? I have an oatmeal, although it's a, a super duper oatmeal because, you know, recently, the last week or so, we've been cutting out the seeds in our oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Today they're in there. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I needed everything in there today. So I've got my oatmeal. I got the um, chia seeds, the hemp seeds, the amla, the sunflower seeds, the pumpkin seeds, uh, spirulina, um, blueberries, Banana and raisins. Raisins. And I have all of that, plus I have frozen raspberries. Right. And the reason that I decided to go with everything is because I am going to be on this uh, radio show from noon to three, I probably will not get to eat lunch until four. Wait. Which means for me, I'll probably end up doing a, a two-meal day. Right. And so, I'll, I won't. I'll have my usual... You'll eat lunch, yes, I'm sure. Absolutely. So I wanted to make sure I get a lot that's going to sustain me uh, through the afternoon. Very smart. Yeah. But... What we wanted to talk to you about today is the Whole Food Plant-Based 7 Day Challenge. Right. Um, we were watching, no, we were listening to The China Study by T. Colin Campbell last night. And he was talking about, and I've, we've run into this too. Ed, you see riveting stuff, by the way, folks. No? Uh, sure, yeah. Or maybe it's more like, oh wait, what, 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 I don't know. It's one of the two. <laughs> um, he runs into the same thing we do, which is when we talk about whole food plant-based, people's immediate reaction is, oh, I can never. Right. I can never give up meat. Oh, I can never give up cheese. Oh, I can never. That's what people always say. Or they put you on a defensive right away. Right. They start asking, right. you know, a bazillion questions and make you defend it, which right. for me is fine. I'm more than yeah, happy to Yeah, you're ready to, to go. It. I'm like, sure, let me give you the sign. How much time do you have? <laughs> um, but for most people, that's really off-putting. Right. And so he may have the suggestion that, what if, rather than saying, oh, I'm going to move toward being whole food plant-based, which, you know, it took us nine months to get to where we are now. Right. What if you just said, hey, I'm going to do it for seven days? Right. Or what if, you, what if I did it for 30 days? And yeah. I thought that that was an interesting idea. So I was wondering if you guys would find it helpful if I created like a seven-day meal plan. Right. That was, you know, seven days worth of whole food plant-based meals that you could use or incorporate. Um, the newsletter that we're sending out tomorrow morning is what to eat when you don't plan. And it has like eight different things that you can throw together from the staples that we keep in the house. Right. And of course you can download our staples from the website and that link is in the, um, on the blog post as well. Right. Um, so that's one way, you know, if you don't plan, then what do you do? But if, what if you want to just do the seven day challenge, what would that look like? And so that's an interesting question to, for me to, to ask people is, if you were going to do this for seven days, not permanently, not forever, not change your lifestyle, right. just for seven days, what might that look like? Right. Um, and, and I guess we're, we're aim, our aim is to make it as easy as possible by saying, here's what you eat. Here's your breakfast, lunch, dinner. Snacks. Day one through day seven, snacks. Um, and hopefully that'll make it easier uh, for people to do the seven-day challenge. But we were talking before we went live about how... 
when you try to do this, you immediately are going to get pushback, you know, from your family and from your friends, and people are going to think it's strange. And we've talked before about how, you know, when we go to vegan events, they are eclectic people. People yeah. who are vegans are very eclectic. Right. And those of us who want to be whole food plant-based, I think, feel like, well, I don't want to be kind of lumped in right. with that. Right. Well, that's, and again, that's because it's the whole political nature, bohemian right. you know, culture, I think. Right. You know? And so... I think one way to be able to get around that would be rather than saying, oh, I'm going whole food plant-based, you just say, oh, I'm doing this seven-day challenge or I'm doing this 30-day challenge. Right. And then by the time you get through it, it's very likely that you'll feel good enough that you'll be like, I'm not going back. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, what, are, what are he saying in seven days? If you actually had your blood work done before your seven-day challenge and had it done after your seven-day challenge, you would immediately see results. Right. Which is incredible. And I was talking to someone just yesterday who's been moving toward whole food plant-based um, in the last two weeks. So she gave up eggs and dairy in the last two weeks, and she said she lost 10 pounds. And she right. was kind of a little afraid. Because she asked me, do I need to be concerned about that? Because 10 pounds in two weeks is a lot. And my response to her was that that's inflammation, right. and that's probably from eliminating the dairy. Yeah, I'm sure. And the casein protein, absolutely. Because dairy causes a lot of inflammation, and so... It, when you eliminate dairy, and of course that includes milk, cheese, yogurts, ice cream, yeah. any of that, that kind of food, anything dairy, yeah. um, you're going to see a, a drastic drop. And especially you're going to notice it. People say, oh, I noticed that I look different because the inflammation goes away. You're not as puffy. That's right. Yeah. So if you're, if you're going to do a seven-day challenge, I think you're going to see that if you, you know, if you do honestly give up the eggs and the milk right. and for seven days and the, and the meat products for right. seven days right. right so what are you what are your thoughts on what would be the hurdles that would have to be overcome I think the well I think the seven day challenge the hurdles are less because of what you said I mean, if you tell somebody oh I'm doing this seven day thing people don't get so anxious or so uh, right. upset right. Uh, because they're like well okay in seven days they'll be back to normal right you know um, but I do think uh, that it, that there are obstacles. The obstacles are friends, family, people that you know. Mm -hmm. They there's this you know, and and I I think it's because they are they can't do it or they feel like they can't do it, so they immediately go on the attack. Mm. So either the attack is um, you know I could never do that, which is a form of attack. I would never give up meat. I would never. I would never. And that's a negative input into you, right? right. Mm -hmm. Or the attack could be an immediate attack on, well, what, how are you going to get your protein? What is this? What is that? I mean, it's crazy, you know? And mm -hmm. so there are forms of attacks. I think that's the biggest challenge for people. I think if, if the public in general felt that if somebody was on a whole food plant-based diet, they were embraced by it and not um, criticized for it, that you'd have a lot more people going whole food plant-based. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't want that criticism. They don't want that challenge. They don't want to go out to dinner with a bunch of other people and have to be the one that's ordering no, do you have steam this? Do you, can you give me a baked potato that's not loaded with butter? Right. And, and they feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I wonder if, well, I, I don't know if, I wonder why. If someone says, oh, I'm paleo, everybody's like, oh, okay. Right. Like nobody says anything about oh, that. Or, pop, oh, yeah. I'm doing the South Beach diet. Oh, right. okay. Oh, I'm Mediterranean. Oh, okay. Like those are all fine. Right. And I think as whole food plant-based becomes more mainstream and people start to understand it, that's helpful. Right. The other thing, too, is you don't have to have all the answers. No. You're more than welcome to just send them to us, send them to yes. our website yes. and say, you know, I watched these two folks and I've seen and they talk about the science and I'm, I'm really, I really think they know what they're talking about. Absolutely. Here, go check them out. Absolutely. And don't feel like you have to defend it because yeah. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, I was reading an article this morning. It's a little bit off subject. Oh, it's okay. I'm um, talking about how to uh, keep your muscle as you age. It talks about when you're in 50, 60, you start, you know, 40s right. to the 50s, you start to, uh, to deteriorating your muscle and all that. And it got to be a really interesting article. And I said, okay, this could be something good. And so I had this one paragraph that talked about protein. Oh, no. And then right, right into, well, of course, the perfect protein is beef or chicken or fish oh, or no. egg. And I'm like, okay, so where's, where is the, uh, you know, the meat? The dairy association. Yeah, so, or the uh, cow, you know, cowman's association sponsoring this article. Well, you but know? the reality is people don't know. They don't know. And, and, and the problem is with articles like that is they, they give the perception that these are your only alternatives. Right. You know, and that's why I don't like them. You know, you can say that, but then also say you can also 
get your protein from beans and, and you know and nuts and, and, vet, and plants in general. Well, what they don't explain is what a protein is. Right. And a protein is a string of amino acids. Regardless of what kind of protein you eat, it's a string of amino right. acids. And so it's think about it like a beaded necklace with lots of different color beads. Right. And the different kind of proteins have different colored beads in different kind of orders. Right? So animal proteins are one order and plant proteins are a different order and different colors. It doesn't matter right. what kind of protein you put into your body. Your body's going to take the beads apart and, and, and put it in the order it wants it, it, wants it yes. So it has nothing to do with anything as to what order the beads are in when they right. come into your system. Exactly. And, you know, animal proteins come with all the extra baggage of saturated fat and cholesterol, cholesterol yeah. and, and that kind of thing. So Inflammation. I don't know why you would choose that string of beads. Right. <laughs> I don't like those beads. But as far as the seven-day challenge goes, um, I think the biggest hurdle, obviously, is going to be, well, what do I eat? Because, you know, as Americans, you get really habituated into the, your pattern and what you eat and what your right. paradigm is and what's normal food for you. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to do a seven-day challenge, I would definitely encourage you to really think about, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, what might it look like? What might I eat? And you know, go to our website, look at the recipes that we have. Look, if right. you're a member, look at our journals, look at what we eat all exactly. of the time. Yeah. Um, you look at the, the newsletter I'm going to send out on Wednesday and eat those eight things on there, even though they're what to make if you didn't plan, are all things that you could eat in your seven day challenge. Right. And for those who aren't on our newsletter, if you'd like to be, you can uh, PM Robin. Yep, private message me on Facebook or, or you, email. Or you can go to our website. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the thing that says join our email. Our, yeah, join our newsletter. Newsletter. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and you'll receive this. I mean, she spends a lot of time putting together real information um, to help people you know, figure it out. And it's not long. Like, I don't write these long essays. Yeah. I know sometimes when you get newsletter, it's 3,000 words. Yeah. I write like 500 or 750. Right. I try to make it really condensed so right. that you get the information you need quickly and can move on with your day. Exactly. So that's my goal. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add about the 7 or 30 day challenge? Um, no, I guess we're not going to talk about the 30 day. We'll just stay with the 7 day. Well, so the 30 day is just the same thing repeated. Right, right. Well, so. the only reason why I mentioned the 30 day is because, again, when we were listening to the China study last night, um, they had one of, his, one of Dr. Campbell's staff who was a meat eater decided he was going to give do the 30-day challenge. Mm -hmm. And after 30 days, you know, between how he felt, the blood work, the loss of weight, and just the overall good health, he was like, why would I ever go back? So the interesting thing, which you may not get from the seven-day, but you may, but maybe, but um, certainly on the 30-day, you'll have, you'll have at that point realized, um, you know, the right. phenomenal change your body's going through. And you would not want to go back, I believe. I feel like the, the seven day is enough to overcome that hump of, oh my God, I could never. Right. And that's what I get from a lot of people is I could never. Well, you certainly could for seven days. Yeah. And that'll help you with the psychological response of I could never right. if you do it for seven days. I agree. I agree. And seven then, days is a good number. But it's one, you know, it's one week. Yeah. One so maybe week. for next week's newsletter, I'll put together um, some ideas for what a seven day challenge might look okay. like. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. If you guys think that would be helpful, yeah, let us know. know, let us know. Thumbs yeah. up, hearts, whatever, something. Let me know that you, that you think that that might be beneficial to, to give you some ideas for a seven day challenge. Exactly. Um, anything else? Um, um, that's a long, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, wait, that long shot. Uh, <laughs> No, I think that's all I have for today. All right. So if you're getting value out of these, we do appreciate you being here and watching them. We do ask you to like and share so that we can reach more people right. because our goal is to be able to help eliminate heart disease, diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. And the way that we do that is by reaching people and giving them the knowledge they need to be able to make educated decisions in their lives. Right. And you can help us do that by liking and sharing our content. Exactly. And so with that... Oh, yeah, okay. I watched, I watched the thumbs up go across the screen. And you got distracted. I got distracted. Oh, not so easily. <laughs> uh, so with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow. It's amazing. That one thumb up caught my attention. It's like, you know. Paying attention is hard. Ooh, look at the lights. I think I might put my hair in the ponytail after all. Yeah. I just don't like it down. It's really... I feel like it's... Well, you're probably getting used to having a phone. Well, too. and it's just ugly because the haircut is bad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah.
I gotta find a lot of women out there who love to have your hair.